In the last chapter, we learned how the Baroque guitar spread from Spain to Italy, France, and beyond with the efforts of maestros like Francesco Corbetta and Robert de Vise. Let's travel back to Spain and explore one of the guitar's most well-known composers, Gaspar Sanz. This is Redbeard Luthery. Gaspar Sanz was born into a wealthy family in northeastern Spain, close to the middle of the 17th century. He gained a degree in theology from the University of Salamanca before travelling to Italy to study for the priesthood in Rome. It was while in Italy that he also gained a serious musical education, studying under composer and multi-instrumentalist Lelio Callista. Callista also mentored and had a significant impact of famed composers Arcangelo Corelli and Henry Purcell, both of whom cited him as an influence in their work. Callista undoubtedly left an Italian influence in Sanz, with him choosing to notate his works and mythologies around the Italian system. Sanz produced three volumes of books that included his compositions that were based around a variety of Baroque dance forms, as well as instruction on technique and notation. Now that we have the foundations of the neck glued together, we can begin shaping. I start by bringing the lines of the neck down to the heel to allow for a smooth carving process. You will see me use a chisel, file, knife and bow sander to get to the desired finish. Edge tools are my favourite, but sometimes files the best tool for the job. I'm prepping this Mulga fretboard to be glued to the neck. Once the glue's dry, then we'll be ready to carve. Sanz's most famous works, Canarios, is based around a dance form that came from the indigenous people of the Canary Islands. The Canary Islands are an archipelago off the coast of West Africa and have been a Spanish territory since the 15th century. The islands have a fascinating yet somewhat elusive history that spans thousands of years. It is possible that the islands were first explored by the Phoenicians, 
an ancient seafaring people that rose in the Levant, what is now modern-day Lebanon and Syria, around 3000 BCE. They were most prominent around 1200 BCE, after the catastrophic Bronze Age collapse at the hands of the mysterious Sea Peoples. After the collapse, their geographic location, coupled with their maritime skill, allowed them to be the perfect vessel to facilitate trade and the sharing of technology and ideas between Mesopotamia, Greece and Egypt. The islands were also likely explored by the Greeks, Carthaginians and Romans. The Numidian king, Juba II, is the first person we have hard evidence for discovering the islands in the 1st century CE. He supposedly found the islands uninhabited, but found long abandoned dwellings and temples. It was after this event that people began to migrate to the islands. While the origins of the island's human habitation may forever remain a mystery, it is fascinating to think that people from North and West Africa 2,000 years ago brought their culture and traditions together and could have been influenced by the remains of buildings and art that could have been left there a further 2,000 years before. After 1,400 years, the Spanish arrived and conquered the islands to add to her empire's growing wealth and influence. With this tragic act, they inevitably took the influence of cultures spanning back thousands of years and introduced it to the Western musical canon, where it has become a staple in the classical guitar repertoire in the 21st century. Next time you listen to Canarios, who knows, you might hear it in the next chapter. Close your eyes and imagine going back through time and living the history of the islands. There is much yet to learn. With the shaping of these Purple Heart appointments, the instrument finally started to come together. I really like the contrast that the Purple Heart provides. I really enjoyed making this bridge. I think it has a simple, elegant design that ties in really well with the instrument. While a decorative moustache would have been a great challenge for my technical abilities, I just felt that aesthetically it wouldn't have fit with this instrument. Some of you may notice that I have a different end graft than in the last chapter. Unfortunately, I sanded through that last one and had to come up with a new design. With this expensive pencil sharpener, I'm able to friction fit the pegs into the headstock. It is time that this chapter comes to an end. Join me next time for the final chapter in the story of the Baroque guitar. This is Redbeard Blue 3.